this is FinCast, the podcast from J2 Innovations, the creators of Fin Framework, an innovative software framework for smart buildings, smart equipment, and IoT. Hi, and welcome to the brand new podcast from J2 Innovations. I'm Steve Randall, and I'm joined by three members of the team as we launch Fin 5.1. My name is Alex. I'm the CEO of J2. I'm Michael Whalen. Uh, I run the professional services and support teams for the US and Europe. Hi, this is uh, Hisham and Nara. I head the stack team, which is responsible for the core development of the Fin product. Guys, welcome to you all now. Alex, you just tapped into this new role in the beginning of the year as CEO, coming from Siemens. How much Siemens does J2 want to be? That's a that's actually a very good question, and and I'm also curious uh, for Mike Mike here to give an answer, uh, having been with J2 uh, for many many years before the acquisition. Um, but to start with me, my my opinion, also coming from Siemens, like you say, um, we surely benefit from being part of it. On the one hand, through the strong investment that's being provided, but also because Siemens, as one of the major players in the industry, is founding its next generation automation system to a good extent on our technology fin framework, which is a great honor for us. And in addition, we also collaborate on topics such as BugNet and cybersecurity, where Siemens has many years of experience and expertise where they can really also help us. Um, but it's also important for us to remain independent to work openly also with all the key players in the industry, also those that are in competition with Siemens. And in addition, and there's something I really want to hear Mike also about, it's important for us to be independent, to keep this unique culture of thinking and being innovative. And I think this will also give us an edge for the future to sometimes think about the market even more disruptively than if we were integrated. So Mike, how do you see it? Being into this two and a half years into the acquisition, um, what, what, what's your view? Yeah, I completely agree with you, Alex. Um, I've been a part of obviously J2 for 10 plus years. So as prior to the acquisition as a stakeholder, and one of the key things that we were able to do was be innovative, not be you know strapped down, uh, which sometimes usually happens when acquired by a large company such as Siemens. Now, there is obviously some benefit from the structure that Siemens provides, but we want to keep that innovative side as key into our business model, which is what I think we're doing really great at for the industry. Exactly. Now, Alex, you've also looked at your brand and identity. Tell us more about that. Over the last two and a half years, we obviously went through a lot of things uh, after the acquisition. And as you might know, J2 was actually founded way before in 2008. For us, it was a good time now to say, let's step back and understand our identity, how it has formed, and let's also try to find ways to communicate this new identity to the market. It was also very important that we clearly communicate the difference between our platform, Fin Framework, which is the foundation of everything we do, and our so-called application suites, and how these app suites then are also targeting different market segments in our focus areas, which are smart buildings, smart equipment, and IoT. And if one wants to understand Fin Framework a little better, to give you a practical example, we're almost like an iPhone for buildings, where we offer a best-in-class edge platform as a foundation and then created an own set of apps for our focus areas um, and then invite also others in the ecosystem to contribute with their apps and services. We would, for example, have an app for trending big amounts of smart building data and allow to compare them dynamically against each other. And one of our partners would then contribute an energy efficiency analytics app to identify concrete savings potential in those data. And then we would again come in with our own app, such as the scheduler, and in the last step, based on those recommendations from a partner's analytics app, make the required changes in a building automatically. So essentially, an end user can be confident that they have a suite of apps that work properly together without having to try and find kind of third party integrations, because that's already been done for them. Exactly. I think I, I could not explain it any better. Yes, correct. And so moving on to 5.1, Fin5 was launched in 2019. How does 5.1 fit in to what you believe are the key new market requirements? I'll leave the details to Mike and Hisham. They can give you even better insights. For me, 
there is two highlights. We will have this new Bugnet connector where we also collaborated with Siemens. This will allow us to be able to certify for BTL. And that once again emphasizes for us, it's really important to play in the traditional building automation market with the traditional weapons. And Bugnet is a key in this environment. But then there's also another highlight for me, which is our dashboard builder application, which will allow our customers in the future to very dynamically and easily down to the end user level, take data from the building, analyze it, visualize it, make sense of it, take actions from it. So 5.1 expresses for me really that we, on the one hand, make sure that the traditional weapons of building automation are in our technology because we come also from the traditional environment of building automation, but yet we're also adding those more newer concepts to data management, to IoT, to visualization, and, and the Dash Builder, Dashboard Builder app is a great representation of such. So those would be my two highlights for 5.1, and there are certainly other things that also Mike and Hisham can talk about. Excellent. Alex, thank you for the moment. Stay with us. Mike, that's kind of teed you up to talk more about 5.1. And let's start with the part that's really taking the limelight, the new dashboard app. Yeah, so the dashboarding has been around for a while now. Um, the Our J2 and our partners have been creating dashboards for, for years. One of the things we noticed, though, is there's a gap in who can create these dashboards. So what we wanted to do is create an actual dashboard builder so an end user or a system integrator can actually create these without having to have any knowledge of programming. Uh, there's a wizard and a bunch of widgets that allow you to choose the data that you want to represent. So it's just as easy as click, click, click and save. There's charts, gauges, weather widgets, but we didn't really want to stop there. Um, what we decided to do is take it into one next step further and we actually have the ability to show graphics within the dashboard that you've already created, which then opens the door for endless possibilities. So do you have a favorite part of the app at all? I think probably one of my favorite parts of the app is the flexibility when creating it. So the way the wizard works is you start from uh, choosing a template and you add your, your widgets. But what you can do after you've started adding your widgets is there's a drag feature, which allows you to adjust and uh, design your dashboard accordingly so you're not stuck to the template itself. What this does is bridges the gap. So an engineer SI is gonna be able to create these dashboards. And the cool part is, is because Finn, everything's a record. Once you make these, you can actually just download and re-upload them anywhere you want. Now, you make it sound really simple, and that's that's brilliant. But obviously, if people need further support on things, that's available, isn't it? Yeah. So we're going to have, uh, of course, docs available online. Um, we'll have some videos and some examples that you'll be able to take a look at. But if still, if there's any other questions, there's always our, our great support team that you can call or email to assist you. And perhaps we can talk about um, another clever addition with 5.1, the Fin Network for Distributed Architecture. Now, as I understand it, it means it's now possible to add FIN instances to the new FIN network tree so that you can see all your devices. Yes, that's correct. So what we've added is uh, in, the, in the DB Builder is called the FIN network tree. So it still follows the same Haystack standard, but what it does is it provides a proxy to your other devices, which allows for editing, creating, deleting of records uh, without actually physically being on the device. The tree also has a, some additional smarts with drag and drops. This allows you to copy records from one device to another or same thing, edit. The main purpose of this tree, though, is to create your database on the server, which has also some smarts in the drag and drop. So, for example, if you take a point out and it has a history and I bring it up into my server database, it's automatically going to set that point up to be ready for syncing of histories. This is different from Fin Edge to Cloud, isn't it? Yeah, so this is a little bit different. So they all kind of work harmoniously together. So in the industry, what you have is you have field devices, right? Backnet, Modbus, right? And then those are connected up to an edge device typically while we're running Fin. And from the Fin network tree, you would be bringing up all those devices up into a server to have one special location to access your data. Now with the edge to cloud, is more like the icing on the cake in the architecture, which provides harmonious connectivity throughout your system. So it takes out the need of opening up ports in your firewall and provides one location for all your user management and connectivity 
Great. Thanks, Mike. And we'll dig deeper into Edge to Cloud in the next episode of the podcast. Let's bring in Hisham now. Now, I think Alex uh, touched on Finn also being uh, now BTL OWS Operator Workstation compliant. What does that mean for users? So this was a strategic uh, kind of move for us and a very effective one, specifically after collaborating with Siemens, as Alex mentioned. They provided us a lot of expertise, which was very helpful and allowed us to officially now apply for the OWS certification. Um, I, mean, I think this will be a huge advantage for our customers because now we can guarantee 100% that all the objects, properties, and methods that are provided by OWS level are supported in our new connector. Now, Hisham, let's talk about something which is always paramount when we're talking about software. It's always there at the back of our minds, cybersecurity. And I know as part of Siemens, J2 is always up to date with the latest cybersecurity, and you're constantly enhancing this. Absolutely. I mean, we take cybersecurity pretty seriously because of also of the nature of our product. Finn as a product, is it's as a platform, it works on embedded devices, controllers, servers, even in the cloud. So it makes it a little bit challenging and actually makes security one of our high priority always. Now, the whole point of this podcast is to explain more about this latest rollout, but what do customers or end users need to do? One of our targets is to make always, actually not just for 5.1, but always to make upgrades for our customers as seamless as possible. So although this is a major release, obviously, and has a lot of new changes, uh, we are working on a migration script um, so that it is backward compatible and eliminate the need for any manual changes that a customer would need to do when upgrading from version 5.x to 5.1. Now, Alex, I need to bring you back in at this point. I have a big note in front of me that says licensing server. Tell us about this development. Yes, yeah, so the, the licensing server is a small change, but it has a big impact for our OEM partners. In the past, our OEM partners would go to us and through email communication, ask for their licenses. We would create them and provide them back to our partners to then bring them on the project. And we're now adding an interface where our partners can directly go to the portal that runs in the cloud, issue their own licenses and bring them to their projects. So it's a simplification of our processes towards our customers. It simplifies also the way we're doing OEM business. And the nice thing is because the licensing server is part of our cloud environment, it also works together nicely with our edge to cloud offering so that going forward, we will be able to even further simplify the processes and at some point even go to cloud-based licensing. Alex, Hisham, Mike, thank you so much for joining us on the first episode of FinCast to talk about Fin 5.1. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. One. You're welcome. And thank you for listening to this first episode of the FinCast. Next time, we'll be digging deeper into Edge to Cloud. Subscribe to get the latest episodes automatically using your favorite podcast app. Copyright J2 Innovations, a Siemens company. Find us at j2innovations.com.